Hey everyone, welcome or welcome back to Inglebard. Recently, a seemingly strange new single board computer showed up on Amazon.com. I'm speaking of the iconical Rockchip RK3328. What's so strange about it? Well, for the incredibly low price of $8.99, you would get the board, a case for it, an LCD display mounted to the case, a micro SD card, and an AC adapter. So that's right, you're essentially getting a full kit for less than the cost of the typical Raspberry Pi Zero W. So for everybody who thinks that sounds like an absolutely astounding deal, take one step forward. Whoa, not so fast everybody. You see, it turns out that the single board computer included in this case is Pine64's Rock 64 one gigabyte model version two. Now this is by no means a terrible single board computer. In fact, performance wise, it should be roughly in the same area as a Raspberry Pi 3B. And for the unbelievable price of $8.99 for that kit that includes everything, then yeah, how could it not be worth that? There are a few caveats, which I'll talk about as we go on with the video, but that price was great. The problem was, it didn't last. Shortly after the $8.99 price, might have even been the same day it bumped up to $9.99. And then they sold out at that price. For a week and a half, they were just gone. Then they showed up again, but this time they were $14.99. A few days later, they were $15.99. And now, as I record this video on Saturday, October 3rd, in the year of our apocalypse 2020, they are currently going for $19.99. So I managed to get in when the thing was still $14.99, and I had a gift card on Amazon, so I scored one for under $10. The question becomes, well, first, is it worth $10? And then next, if it's worth that price, at what point does it stop being worth it? So we'll take a look at that, and I'll answer those questions for you at the end of this video. For now, do you want to see its package? First off, how dare you? Second, here it is. The Iconical branded SBC ships in this lovely white box. So fancy, so elegant, so boxy. And what's this? It's got a UPC code on it. So very UPC. Let's take this stuff out and see what we get. So here's the case. The SBC is already inside it and oh boy, here's problem one. There's no cutout for the HDMI port. You see, this thing is sold as a network security monitor which is why it's got the little LCD attached to its GPIO pins and has a memory card already inside it with an OS designed for operating that. Now, we're gonna have to take this puppy apart. We've got four Phillips head screws to remove, so let's go ahead and do that. Next up, time to pop out the board itself. And here we are. Yep, it's a Rock 64 version 2. With this SBC, we've got an RK3328 CPU, two USB 2.0 ports, one USB 3.0 port, a micro SD card slot, Pi compatible GPIO pins, an Ethernet port, a reset switch, and some other stuff I'm going to unceremoniously gloss over. Gloss. You know what it doesn't have? Wi Fi or Bluetooth, which is kind of a bummer. As I noted before, this model contains one gigabyte of RAM, which, if we're gonna use it for emulation, is plenty considering the systems it can handle. Now, if you head over to Pine64's homepage for the Rock 64, you'll see they have quite a few different OS's available right there for the device. We've got loads of different versions of Linux, a few different versions of Android, and a few gaming-based OS's like Waka, among others. Since we wouldn't want to accidentally do anything productive, let's go ahead and get Waka. You can write the image to an SD card with your favorite image writing software, assuming you've got a favorite image writing software. Or Etcher, you can just use Belena Etcher, linked below. Just a quick note while we prep things here, I tried a few different versions of Android on the device, and when I did, performance wasn't great and the CPU ran really, really hot. Like hotter than the sun hot. Well, not quite that hot, but you get the idea. I put a heatsink on it and tossed a little fan on top of that to make sure that it didn't start throttling or damage the CPU. 
Also, a quick note on controllers. I tried an official Xbox One controller as well as my Power A third-party Xbox One controller, and neither one of those devices worked on the Rock 64 with any of the five different OSs that I tried. <coughs> Oddly enough, a PlayStation Classic controller worked just fine and dandy on this thing, and an 8-bit Doe M30 also worked with it. Now, some emulators did not play nice with the 8-bit Doe controller and wouldn't let me reassign inputs properly, so I don't know what was up with that. At least I can confirm that the PS Classic controller worked fine with everything that I tried. Alright, let's take a look at some games now. Oh, and a note about Lockup. If you want to use an external USB drive, it automatically mounts your ROMs in this path. It's storage, then ROMs, and then the name of your external drive. So for the Rock 64, does it do Game Boy Advance, which can be a problem on lower end hardware? It sure does. Here, look, I'll prove it. As you can see, Aria of Sorrow is full speed, V-Sync, no frame skipping, or any of that garbage. And yeah, even a more difficult game to run, like V-Rally 3 here, runs perfect. At least as far as I can tell. What about PlayStation? Can it play PlayStation games? Yep, sure can. Didn't run into any speed problems in any of the games I tried. Here's the super underrated Clonoa, running like a champ. Sweet. Gradius slash Gradius Gaiden? No problems there. Capcom vs SNK? You bet. Everything I tried was fine. What about 32X games? They can be a problem on some SPCs after all. Well, not on the Rock 64. Check it out. Space Harrier runs exactly as expected. You may notice some jitteriness here and the frame rate not being consistent, but that's how Space Harrier is on real 32X hardware. Sometimes it's 60 frames a second, sometimes it's 30, sometimes it seems like it's somewhere in between. Here's Virtual Racing Deluxe. As you can see, this runs pretty much exactly like it does on real hardware. Hey, cool! Does it play Jaguar games then? Hell no, mother! It can load them, I guess, but no one I know on the planet will consider this playable. Even Rayman, which is a pretty lightweight game and can run sort of okay on a Raspberry Pi 4, runs dismally on this thing. So, sorry, Jaguar fans, scratch this device off your list. Too bad, right? How about 3DO? How about 3D? No! Yeah, looking at Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo here, you get a pretty quick idea that 3DO is off the table. While this is a less than perfect conversion of the arcade game, it should be running smoothly and at the same speed, roughly, as the arcade game. Oh, I know, I hear you. You really wanted to play Way of the Warrior. Oh well. How about Nintendo DS? Does it do that? Let's ask an expert. <laughs> that would be a no. Here, marvel as I fail to even get to the start screen in Portrait of Ruin on any of the DS emulators included in Laka. Let's take a step back hardware-wise and look at the MSX. Can it at least do MSX? Yep, sure can. Behold! Hey, it's Salamander! Amazing, right? No? Well, it works. How about arcade games? Can we run any decently spec 16-bit arcade games? Well, sort of. Here's Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo, embarrassing the 3DO version we looked at just before. Yeah, this works fine at full speed in Final Burn Neo. Let's try something a little tougher, though. How about Darius Gaiden? And oh my god, what is that? It's a bit slow. But that's MAME for you, right? Let's try Final Burn Neo. Surely that will be... Oh, good god. Okay, how about older MAME? Hey, finally, that's sort of playable. But it's not perfect. 
you'll see some frame skipping and slowdown, especially when it uses alpha effects. Can the Rock 64 run N64, since they both got 64 in their name? Don't smoke crack. Mario Kart 64 is one of the least taxing games on the system to emulate, and it runs super slow on here with some glitches. How about Dreamcast? Surely the Rock 64 can play Dreamcast games on Laka? Well, yeah. If you like your games varying in speed all over the place while you play them, Look at the port of Virtual Fighter 3 TB. It runs at about half speed during a fight, and full speed at the end of a fight and in between rounds for a split second here and there. Not exactly playable. I tried a few other Dreamcast games and, nah, it's not worth messing with. Well, I guess there's no hope of the Rock 64 running PSP games then, huh? Don't you ever get tired of being wrong all the time? Here's Darius Burst. It runs, well kind of shockingly great on here. It stutters a teeny bit here and there with some complicated effects, but this runs at full speed with no frame skipping almost all of the time. But it's not all sunshine and roses in PSP though. Yeah, PPSSPP's performance has always varied wildly according to the game you're running, and that's the same case here. If we take the Wipeout titles for a spin for example, you'll be treated to this. Oh, and I'm running all games at 1x resolution to ensure maximum speed. Maximum speed on Wipeout here seems to amount to about 3 miles per hour. Finally, let's take a gander at Wonderswan. Can the Rock 64 run this at full speed? Well, yeah, both the original and color run fine in every game I tested. Here's Makai Mora for Wonderswan on the original in black and white. This game sucks, by the way. Don't listen to anyone that tells you it doesn't. It's slow, the control is unresponsive, jumping is terrible, and the enemy AI is garbage. Here's Golden Axe on the Wonderswan Color. This game sucks, by the way, and don't listen to anyone that tells you it doesn't. The control is eh, the enemy AI is garbage, the gameplay is clunky, and it's just not a pleasant experience despite looking okay. And there you have it. That's how Laka runs on the Rock 64. Bottom line, well, for the $20 asking price of this thing right now as I record this, assuming it hasn't gone up again in the last few minutes, I'd say if you just wanted a single board computer that can run some retro games pretty well and you don't need an active network connection, then sure, why not? Essentially, it runs everything PlayStation and below just fine, and you'll also be able to run a select few PSP games on it and a good batch of arcade games between the two versions of MAME and Final Burn Neo. It's a better performer than a Pi Zero or Zero W, so at $20, it's not quite as easy a decision as it would be if it were, say, 10 or 15, but since you do get the AC adapter and a memory card, yeah, it's still an okay deal. Just keep in mind, if you plan on using the included case, you'll have to cut out room to plug in an HDMI cable, or you could live dangerously and just raw dog it. Also, like I talked about earlier, I would absolutely recommend that you install a heatsink and a fan on this board to make sure that it doesn't get too hot, because it did really get extremely hot to the touch without that. I didn't measure the temperature, so I can't tell you exactly how many degrees it was, but it was really hot to the touch and very unpleasant, which is not good. Alright, so what are we talking about bottom line here? With the iconical Rockship RK3328, you could possibly get an absolutely amazing deal, a pretty good deal, a good deal, or a deal that's not worth taking. Now, do keep in mind that Pine64 sells the Rock64 1GB model on their own website completely by itself with no accessories for about $25. Not ignoring the competition, you can either get a Raspberry Pi 3B, 3B Plus, or 4B for $35, again by itself with no accessories. With all that in mind, I've put together a super helpful handy dandy chart that shows you my opinion of the value of this iconical Rock Chip 3328 kit at its various price points. I'll also add that in the description, at least at the point where I bought it, it said that it came with a 16GB microSD card. 
When I received mine, it had an 8 gigabyte micro SD card. So 16 gigabytes? You're a f***ing liar! But in the end, if you're just gonna put Laka on it anyway, there's plenty of room for that, and then you can just throw your ROMs or images onto an external USB device, which Laka will easily recognize as you've seen. Another thing worth talking about is your case situation. There's not a whole lot of variety or availability of cases for the Rock 64, and while the footprint is extremely similar to a Raspberry Pi 3B, it's not the same because it uses that barrel jack power port instead of a micro USB power port. Now luckily I happen to have a Raspberry Pi 3B case laying around that is a little different than normal cases in that the sides could be removed. So I was able to just take off the side with the ports that don't match the Rock 64 and use that one. On another note, I will also let you know that I'm going to put up a video comparing lockup performance on the Rock 64 versus the Raspberry Pi 3B and probably the 4B as well. And I'll be doing that in the future, by which I mean like a couple of days, <laughs> because a lot of the work on that is already done. I'm also almost definitely going to put out a video on running Android on this thing, because I like Android and I want to do that. So expect that coming in a few days too. And that's going to just about do it for this video, my retro gaming friends. So what do you think of this iconical single board computer kit? Is this something that you're interested in? Is this something that you're only interested in up until a certain price point? What's your breaking point for this kit? Go ahead and share your opinion with the world in the comments. With that, I will say thanks for watching, and see me later!